They didn't. Teaser. Super. Saline County, Missouri. May 3rd, 1865. Super. The Civil War has ended. For those Missourians who owned plantations and prospered socially and economically before the war, their lives have been drastically changed. But for others, such as the formerly enslaved people who worked on those plantations, and people who lived outside of gender and sexual norms, the war and its aftermath have brought hope for a better life. Exterior. Road to Gallagher Family Plantation. Day. A man races a magnificent buckskin horse down a country road. His hat is pulled low. A bandana covers his face. The horse moves at an incredible speed. A dog is not far behind. They turn at a sign that reads Longford Plantation, Quint Gallagher, owner, and continue to race. Grabs a rifle from his saddle and scans the area through its sights. The outside of the house suffers from Civil War neglect. The outside grounds are well tended. The man's panicked breathing clashes with soft piano music coming from inside the house. The dog runs to him. He signals her to be quiet. He peeks in a window, sees no one, trots around the house. The piano music gets louder. So does the panicked breathing. He looks inside. A woman plays piano. He quietly opens the door and slips inside. Interior, Gallagher family home, music room, day. He frantically scans the inside of the house. It is slightly tattered, but still looks like a great stately home. The woman at the piano is Millie Preston, 25, a stunning southern belle in a beautiful dress. Millie is a fierce inner mountain woman she has not yet fully discovered. She gasps as she sees the man and rushes to him. Sugar, what's wrong? The man removes his bandana and hat. Beautiful, long hair tumbles out. He is a she, Beth Fontaine, 25, a daring gender outlaw who rides and shoots better than most men. In oversized male clothes, Beth appears more like a boy than a man. Your husband is alive. A door squeaks. Beth frantically scans the room with her rifle, still panting. There is no other person in the room. Millie appears baffled. Roar is dead. Killed in the war. Not dead. Alive. He's coming. We have to run. Millie's in shock. She stares blankly, shaking her head. No. No, the Amish said he was dead. Beth's face softens with compassion and love. Millie, darling, little kisses. She takes Millie's head in her hands and gently plants kisses around her face. Beth stops kissing her, tries to catch her eye, but Millie, dazed, cannot focus. Millie, look at me. Look at me! Beth captures Millie's gaze. Their eyes lock. Rory just got off a train. Walking? He'll be here in two hours, but if someone picks him up, we have to run. Beth tenderly pushes Millie toward a door. Interior, Gallagher family home, hallway, day. Beth gently pulls Millie up a grand staircase. I'll get Sam. You pack your things like we're going to Aunt Joe's. Are we going to Aunt Joe's? No, that's the first place Rory will look. We're running for independence. We have to take the wagon train now. Millie pulls away from her, troubled. No, we're going on the wagon train next year. We're not ready now. Beth takes Millie's arm, resumes walking up the stairs. Rory is alive. He'll come for you. Millie pulls away, pants with anxiety. <gasps> He'll come for me. He'll kill you. Trust me. We'll change our names. Go to Oregon. He'll never find us. Millie stops panting, has an eerie calm about it. Yes, he will. He'll find us. I've got to go home and wait for him. Beth's eyes open wide. What? Don't you love me? Tears stream down Millie's face. She strokes Beth's cheek. Oh, Beth, I love you sorely. That's why I must go back. You're talking crazy. You don't know him. He won't just kill you. He'll do worse, then kill you. I'm not afraid of Rory. You should be. He's evil. Beth's face freezes in fear. End of teaser.